Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite fields, subfields, theorems, whatever you want. A very biased collection because it's my favorite fields, right? So what can be more biased than my favorites, right? Anyway, um, so I would like to tell you about something I really like um, and is super, super, super useful. The theory of computer algebra. So computer algebra for me is useful because I use it all the time. And it's essentially about making algorithms work on a computer in the fastest way possible. So two steps, make it work on a computer and second in the fastest way possible. And yeah, so um, there is one example I would like to show you and it's actually from chemistry. So computer algebra is, is useful, not just in mathematics as a way to get conjectures uh, or even prove results because computer algebra systems do exact calculations. So depending a bit on the type of proof you have in mind, you can actually just do a calculation in a computer algebra system and put them into your proof. That's totally legit because computer algebra systems do exact calculation. Unless, of course, you force them to do numerical calculations. Otherwise, they're exact calculations. And they're, in some sense, even more legit than human calculations because kind of a computer can make mistakes, sure, uh, but a human is more likely to make mistakes, at least in my uh, opinion. But anyway, that's just a long ramble about something very different, not very different, something a bit different. And I'm going to tell you now about chairs and boats. Um, so here are those pictures of chairs and boats. If you can see why this is called a chair or a boat, uh, congratulations, I can't, but they are called chairs and boats. And the story is stolen from one of my favorite books, which I will see uh, later on. But anyway, it's a true story. It's not a story. It's a true story. And it's a research paper people wrote about chairs and boats. And essentially the idea is uh, what well, the story is. You have this molecule, so three carbon uh, atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms. And they arrange themselves in two very different configurations, two incongruent configurations. Um, the chair is essentially just one and the boat has uh, many and yeah, so these are, this is how they uh, look like. And chairs appear very often and boats don't appear that often. Anyway, but the point is, and I built them, at one point I gave a talk about this uh, live, and I built them, uh, the chair and the boat configuration, and I kind of lost what I built, very, very silly. So I would like to show you, but I lost it, but I have a, a better picture in a second anyway. If you build them, then you will realize that the chair doesn't move. It's kind of a stiff configuration, while the kind of the boat is easily twistable, which somehow says that one of them is a kind of a unique solution to something like a point in a space and the other one is more like a continuous solution. And you would like to explain that in some, some way or form, right? So you're a chemist and you observe this in whatever uh, your experiments and you would like to kind of verify that mathematically. And this is where computer algebra came into the game, which is kind of extremely surprising in some sense. But what they did is they did the following. Um, they kind of modeled everything as a configuration of vectors and then they had variables that are supposed to satisfy certain equations. So it's a bunch of polynomial variables that satisfy polynomial type of equations and then you might, might think, oh, maybe they have done some algebraic geometry things because um, the solution should be the zero sets of those polynomials. Huh? So you have a bunch of parameters here and just think of them as variables. Um, corresponding to the lengths between the various bonds you have in this configuration, corresponding to the angle and corresponding to some cyclicity condition. And it gives you a bunch of equations that are supposed to be true. So the zero set of those equations is a set of your solutions. Yeah? The algebraic variety that you get from solving those equations is the set of your possible solutions. So you want to see the chairs and the boats somehow appearing in that algebraic variety. Um, just the set of equations you get is like super messy and you can't really do anything with it. That's what you think. And then computer algebra enters the game because you can just fit it in a computer and ask for a Gorybna basis, a certain type of nice basis for polynomial equations. And from that you can actually read off, I will show you a little bit of an illustration later, but from that you can actually read off the corresponding solution spaces, right? So you model it writing a system of equations you can't really do anything with it, but the equations come naturally from the geometry, the chemistry of the system. But you can't do anything with it, it looks too complicated, so you give up 
or you open your favorite computer algebra system and compute the Grebner basis and the Grebner basis are just much nicer and it does the calculation for you the Grebner basis is much nicer and you can essentially read off uh, the solution set so here uh, I did that at one point I built the boat and the chair and if you do it the, one of them will be, will be moving and the other one um, is kind of very stiff anyway the point is you get a flexible solution um, and which are the, the the boats they lie on a curve and I'll show you the curve in a second how you can see that using Grobler basis but like they're flexible right they kind of move continuously and they all lie on a curve while the chair solutions are just isolated points in that variety so they don't move you know, they're isolated point in this, this variety and this is like a, a, a very interesting application of computer algebra in this case computation of Grobner basis, right? You solve this problem. Why are there two configurations? Why is one of them stiff and the other one moves around? By just writing down a variety, solve it. You can't do it; it's too complicated. Do the Grobner basis. In the Grobner basis, it's like obvious, and you just read it off. One of them is a continuous solution. The other one is a a point type solution, which is a kind of a really really nice selling point, I think, for uh, the method of Grobner basis, or in this case the method of computer algebra right so let me do it again for you so you have those two configurations you get them from let's say a, an experiment and you would like to explain them and you can nicely write down well you can nicely find a solution using Grobner basis one of them is continuous uh, one of them is isolated and it's kind of really nice and here's my favorite book where I got the story from it's called modern computer algebra and it has this uh, kind of nice table of different things computer algebra studies and they divide it into Euclid, Newton, Fermat, Gauss and Hilbert and one of the Hilbert ones is Grobner basis and for example an example theorem of what computer algebra right computer algebra is about putting algorithms on a machine so an algorithm can solve a problem as an algorithm a machine can solve a problem for you and you would like to do that in some reasonably fast fashion so computer basis uh, computer basis computer algebra can do some usually does something like the Grobner basis thing is uh, it's actually pretty shit so d is a degree n is the number of variables and it's pretty shit computational time but you can do it for um smaller type of systems like this little example of the boats and the chairs and computer algebra kind of does the same for many 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 different things and you would be really surprised what actually can be computed on a machine the so one thing I never learned during my studies, uh, so in, in university, university type of studies, which I now think is really crucial, is like, how how do you actually compute things? Uh, I never learned that, and I'm, later on I was super surprised that, oh, you can actually compute what a sheaf is. You can fit that on a machine, while in the lecture you only saw like the, the abstract definition. Some of that's bad, and you probably will be very surprised what is actually computable on a machine, and I somehow feel like, Hopefully this video will motivate you and look, uh, kind of try to look into what is actually doable uh, on a machine. And this was just one example which I took from the book, and I kind of feel like it's a fun example uh, from from chemistry. So what they really did in this case is, if you do uh, the Grobner thing, you you easily see that there's some solution of the form x minus one, or maybe it was x minus three, and there's an x minus one over three which are the, the boat and its mirror, it's really just one point. And then there's a continuous solution, which in the Grobner basis boils down to the intersection of those two varieties here. And I just turned the picture. You can literally see that the intersection is like this little circle thing here. It's roughly sitting here. And that's exactly the circle you get here, the circle of solutions for um, the two, for the boats. Yeah. So I said again, you solve the equations, you get a bunch of uh, polynomials that need to need to vanish at once. You do the Grobner approach. Grobner immediately tells you that there are two isolated points. Fine, isolated points gives you the chair. And the other Grobner things you can just easily kind of analyze them. And the intersection of those is a circle, and the circle are exactly um, the solutions for the boat, which is the flexible uh, solution. Anyway, let me go back to this at one point. The, now right now because kind of the point of computer algebra is that there's so many things you can actually do in a computer you would be surprised 
category theory in easy feast for a computer, for example. And I was very surprised that it is actually uh, doable. Like more standard things like algorithms and, and whatever, and numerics or integrations, differentiations, Gertner bases, algebraic geometry, whatever it is. There's a lot of things you can actually do on a machine. And computer algebra um, studies type of those type of questions. Not just to implement something on a machine, that's a good step, first step, but also to make it as fast as possible. But because you never know what what your user, how many, uh, how big the matrices are that your user would like to compute. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.